Another huge update with Logic 10.5 was the addition of live loops. And I find that working with both the step sequencer and live loops in tandem really speeds up my production workflow for electronic music. And the great thing is if you prefer just working in the tracks area instead, you can do that too. And you can easily migrate ideas back and forth between the live loops grid and the tracks area. So a couple key commands to remember here are option V, which will toggle back and forth between the live loops grid and the tracks area. You can also use these buttons up here to hide and show the tracks area and the live loops grid. Another one that's helpful is option L, which will just show the live loops grid. And then you also have option B, which will show both the live loops grid as well as the tracks area. Now, first I'll show you how to create pattern regions and pattern cells. So I like this all hands beat instrument, but I want to create my own pattern. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete my pattern cell, my pattern region and my MIDI region here and start from scratch. Now, if you wanna create a pattern region from scratch, you simply right click in the tracks area and choose create pattern region. This will open up the step sequencer and it'll automatically assign all of the kit pieces in your instrument. Now, if you're working with a synthesizer or like a melodic or bass or chord instrument, it's a little bit different. We'll get into that later on in this course, but for right now, just for simplicity, I'll stick with a drum kit. By default, each step in the sequence is a 16th note and the sequence has by default 16 steps. You can change that here, but just for simplicity, I'll stick with 16 steps and I'll just make a really basic sort of four on the floor pattern here. One thing I like to do is preview the pattern. Again, that's option spacebar, so I can hear the pattern change on the fly as I'm creating the pattern in the step sequencer. It's a really simple idea. I wanna go a little bit faster though. So I'm gonna change my tempo up here to 100. Yeah, that sounds a bit better at a faster tempo. Now you can also do the same thing with cells in live loops. You can right click on an empty cell and choose create pattern cell. And then go through that same process that I just did, creating a beat from scratch. If you've started building an arrangement in the tracks area and you wanna move it over to the live loops grid, you can very easily drag these regions over in and it'll create pattern cells out of these. So I can do the same thing here with my chords, I can pull that over, and then I can just trigger this with my scene trigger here. Then I'll press spacebar to stop playback and then command return to stop all cells. This also resets the playback of the cells. Now, if I wanted to copy these over to a new scene, but maybe change up the beat a bit, I could do that as well. I'll just drag over both of these and press command R. Then I can go into my second all hands beat here and maybe change this up a bit. Now, when I work with live loops, I like to create a short cycle range in my tracks area. So I'll go ahead and do that. So what I'll do is I'll set the cycle range toward the beginning here. I'll just make like an eight bar loop out of it. And you can press C to turn this on. Now, this is important for two reasons. One, it keeps the playhead toward the beginning of the tracks area. This is helpful because the live loop grids playback is tied to the tracks area. And two, this makes sure that when you trigger a scene, it immediately plays rather than having to wait for the next quantize start value to start. You'll also notice that when I trigger a scene, that the tracks area is disabled. So this ensures that you're not gonna hear regions and cells playing at the same time. Now let's say you have the opposite. Let's say you've built something in the live loops grid and you wanna transfer these patterns over into the tracks area. Maybe 
you want to come back in here and record some vocals or something on your arrangement. This is very simple to do as well. Just set your playhead where you want your first scene to go, then click on the scene to select it, right click, and choose insert scene at playhead, and it'll insert that scene. Then maybe I want scene two, so I'll click on scene two, right click and choose insert scene at playhead. So now I've got scene one and scene two. All the patterns are here. It doesn't convert it to MIDI or anything like that. It's still a pattern region, so I can go in and edit it the same way I could in live loops. In the next video, I'll show you how you can use some of the built-in pattern presets in the step sequencer.